Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rocks with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. lunch break so we got to make it through this first story up your boy joe button boy talk about a sinking ship is going down over there right and not in a good way you guys so let me back up since i haven't been here in two weeks um and well i wasn't here last week i was here the week before at least i wasn't here for top of the blogs we did have a top of the blogs extra though talking about that old scallywag <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys. Um, and before I get started, also thank you all for the well wish, well wishes. Joe's um, Joe, my son, his graduation from Southern University um, was beautiful. We had a great weekend. I was very very proud. All the things that I said on Instagram, on social media, um, just really really happy for him um, that he was able to maintain and make it through. The weather was beautiful got out of there right on time as you guys see and all of my baton rouge and my louisiana and my down south uh rock stars just you guys please stay safe out there i see they're having terrible terrible rain and flooding um and that didn't start until after we left so thank god for that um he is safe um there is some flooding issues in his area but nothing where it's you know above me or anything like that so <clears throat> But yeah, thank you guys for everybody who who uh, had so much to say and congratulating him and um, just spreading positive thoughts and love um, our way. We're real proud. So now we just got Jada and um, then we'll be done. Everybody's about to be back home though because Jada's not going back to Georgia Southern. I don't believe um, in person anyway. And Joe will be home hopefully just for a little while and then he'll get him a place and then he'll be gone and Actually, I believe Jado will probably be gone before Joe. But anyway, you guys, that's neither here nor there. Yes, it was wonderful for everybody who was asking. It was a fabulous, fabulous time. Okay? All right. But anyway, getting back to the other Joe, and that would be Joe Budden. Yeah, you guys, Joe Budden is having some problems right now. So last week, or maybe the week before, it was coming on down the pike that um, Rory and Mal, which are the you know, the co-host on the Joe Budden podcast, um, that they were um, fired, okay? Evidently, now let's back up even further. You guys know that they had been on hiatus. They had gone on a break um, after Joe Budden had suggested that they take a break because there were certain tensions on the set and he was not really clear what the problem was. At least that's what he was implying to everybody who was listening so he suggested strongly that they take a break and they did okay when they returned it didn't seem like they were here for long because um next thing you know joe budden is firing them on the podcast i don't listen to joe budden's podcast on the regular only in times when i really need to if there's a story about it or anything but otherwise i don't really listen to his podcast so i was not aware that there were all these issues that were going on with um joe budden and his podcast but yes when you fire your co-host so publicly so um yeah there is definitely issues there now we've got joe budden podcast without his co-host rory and mal who most people will say helped build that podcast from the ground up um even though it does say the joe budden podcast obviously joe budden was the name draw he was the most known of the three and um you know so it's his show technically but when you talk about when a show has started you know from the ground up you've got to give credit to the people that have been there from the beginning as well and rory and mal have been there from the beginning helped build the brand so um yeah they're gone now and um everybody was shocked the way that it was handled um one of them i'm sorry i don't know who is rory and who is mal but I believe it might have been Rory or it could have been Mal. Mal. <laughs> Don't give me the line, you guys. But one of them did come out. Well, they actually did have a response to um, uh, being fired. They have an hour-long interview where they're talking about certain issues um, with the podcast. Um, how they felt that Joe Budden felt like the show was... 
um, gained so much popularity because of his music career. They felt like, he felt like, um, the reason why people gravitated towards Joe Button was because of the fact that he was a rapper at one time. But they made it very clear that even though that may have been true at the beginning, obviously now people are coming to hear the three of them speak, okay? And that's evident when you see them at their live shows. Um, when you compare Joe Button's live shows when he was a rapper to the live shows as a podcast, um, the audience is exponentially larger all right so yes they feel like they should have some credit in uh, building that podcast and that's something that joe button had a problem doing they also said that there were problems with the money and it always boils down to the money don't it i guess that the they were given um they were given a percentage of whatever this money was made Joe Button's now look, I'm about to I'm gonna mess this up. So let me not even mess it up. I'm just going to say that they wanted to see the books, basically. They wanted to know how much the podcast was making as they're making a percentage of whatever this podcast is making. And they had when I say they, I say Joe or his team, his finance finance people as accountants or whatever they had an issue with showing them every time they would ask there would be some sort of problem and you know when you are talking about being an open book or being transparent um, with people that you co-host with then it shouldn't be a problem about me seeing exactly what is made here now people have opinions on this either way they say that you know some people say well if i'm the employer I don't have to show you how much I make, okay? What you get is your salary or your hourly, whatever I pay you. The wages that I give you shouldn't even, what I get, what I make shouldn't even concern you, okay? Um, but again, that takes me back to, you know, are we really employer, employee, or are we really kind of like a more of an, on a, a level playing field where, you know, we're giving us just as much energy to this podcast as you are. Um, and they feel like they should, you know, they should be at that table and they should know what is going on and what the finances are and everything. So you guys tell me what your opinion is on that because I can see both ways of that. But it all boils down to who exactly is, who does the show belong to? It says Joe Budden, Joe Budden podcast. It is his show. Okay, so um, I guess Joe Budden has the right not to let them see that paperwork. I did see somewhere him talking about there was some $400,000 discrepancy that came about. They're trying to get that corrected. Not sure if Rory and Mal were shorted some money, um, you know, from that $400,000 or what. Um, but yeah, they had an issue with not being able to see the books all right um and i don't even think that they felt like they were underpaid i you know i i think that they just felt like it wasn't fair that they didn't know exactly what was going on and maybe they were being underpaid because if they see that this podcast is making a whole 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 more bunch more money than they originally expected um, then maybe it's time to go back and renegotiate some things okay so just let them see what it is so that was one of the problems as well as, you know, them saying that just the set itself, people that worked for the podcast, people that worked for Joe Button's network um, were unhappy. People felt like they were overworked. They were underpaid. It's the, it's the, you know, we've heard these stories over and over and over again. Um, you know, people feel like they're not making what they are worth. And, um, it just made for a, a nastier environment. There was even a point when Rory and Mal had decided that maybe they would give some of their money to the staff, um, which you shouldn't have to do because I mean, fuck it. You if you not if it's not your shit, you an employee as well. So you mean to tell me that I have to in order to make sure that I'm in an environment where you know that's conducive to you know, us getting out some entertaining podcasts. Now I got to give up my fucking salary to you so you can. Be you know, that's not really Rory or Mal's job to do. That's really should come from the top. That should come from the leadership. Um, that should come from Joe Button. Okay. So 
all these things are going on and um you know even though they were fired i guess it maybe it seems like it, it might have been a welcome you know how these things are sometimes in the long run after shit goes down you know after we get out of our feelings after we be hurt or after we be feeling like you know we don't have a gig anymore after we get past all that sometimes these things can be a blessing in dis disguise. Sometimes we might be holding ourselves back as a co-host when really we could have our own shit, okay? And so maybe that's how Rory and Mal will play it. Um, it looks like they are going to have something. They have come out with some new artwork um, that says new Rory and Mal. And it's just the just like a... Um, um, it's like the negative, um, I, I can't even think of what the word is that I want to say. But anyway, it's just their beards. One is a beard and the other one is a beard with a hat. And it says, New Rory and Mal. Um, and we're assuming that that could possibly be a podcast now. Like I said, I don't watch the show. I don't know what people tune in to hear. You guys let me know. Do you think that Rory and Mal could have a podcast that's successful on their own? Um, they obviously are known. Um, I think Joe Budden probably was the most vocal out of those, you know, out of that group. However, you know, sometimes we all work together, you know, and because um, because because are, are people going to be still tuning in just to hear Joe Budden talk? You know, I've always felt like Joe Budden is like a cantankerous old man. I, I've always felt like he likes to hear himself speak. Um, I always felt like he usually thinks that he's right. Um, and um, I felt like maybe those two guys that were there as well were kind of there to kind of smooth out all of Joe Budden's rough edges. Okay. And um, that might become more evident when it's just Joe Budden or if, because there's somebody else is still there, right? There's another guy or something. I, I'm not really sure if that's correct or not, but I mean, a whole podcast of just Joe Button, it seems like that can that can become um, <laughs> overwhelming at some point. And then on the same token, is Rory and Mal, do they have enough of the take charge and, you know, a contribution to a, a subject or a topic where they could carry the whole show on their own? Do they need a Joe Button? And does Joe Button need a Rory and Mal, you know? Um, I mean, I, I feel like they could probably do it, especially with all of the controversy that has surrounded this, you know, this situation anyway. Um, I feel like people will tune in just, just to spite Joe Button, okay? But I may be wrong about that because I don't listen to them. So you guys tell me, um, because I know a lot of you guys do watch Joe Button and um, his podcast and, and have an opinion about that. So y'all let me know about that. Okay, now <clears throat> that's all going down. Finally, Joe Budden does apologize to um, Rory. He says that he definitely has to apologize to Rory because Rory was more of his friend. Um, he said possibly Mal too, but more so Rory because they've had so many fly nigga moments. Okay, they've done many things together. They actually had a friendship. Um, and, um, Joe said that he doesn't really know how it got to be where it is today, other than, you know, him having to take accountability for poor leadership skills. Um, but, um, so yeah, he did apologize, but I mean, is it too little too late? I mean, apparently so. If you fired them and they're gone, you know, and now you've, People talk about Joe Budden saying that he is notorious for burning down bridges, that he always sets himself up in a good situation and finds a way to blow it every single time. Um, I only know the Joe Budden from the reality shows, but I mean, I guess if we was really going to, <laughs> if we was really going to talk about that, you know, about how he is on a reality show, then I could say that he does that as well on the shows, right? So um, this could be very well another moment where Joe Budden is just um, setting himself up for failure like he's done in the past with many other aspects of his life. Y'all have to let me know what you think about that as well. Now, when I told you guys about people um, that work for him also being unhappy, 
Um, we can talk about the um, his Joe Button has a network and he is trying to have these groundbreaking shows and podcasts and different media where um, you know he's he's um, um, you know making way for black creators in particular. So he did the two podcasts. The one one of the podcasts is Karen Civil and Mean Glee. Okay, can't think of the can't think of the name of that podcast. And then he has the second podcast that he's had, which is called So The Thing Is. And both of those podcasts feature women. Um, and Joe P Button said that it was important for him to have his first two podcasts, um, you know, or his first two things that he launched to be headed by women so that he can show that this is a space for women where, you know, everybody is treated equally and everybody has a chance to, you know, at, at the piece of the pie, right? So he has the See, See the Thing Is podcast, and that one is with Bridget Kelly and Mandy B. And then the other one I told you guys that I cannot think of right now what the name is, but with Karen Civil and um, Mean Glee. Well, evidently, um, on this podcast, we used to have another, a third person on the See the Thing Is podcast by the name of, of, of Olivia Dope. And she was a radio DJ, well known in New York, evidently, for years, somewhere around a decade. And now she is on this podcast. Um, Olivia Dope has come out just recently and said that she left the show because she abruptly left the show back in January of this year. Um, didn't really say why she was leaving back then, or at least it wasn't known to the general masses. Now she has come out and said the reason why she left is because she was sexually harassed by Joe Budden. And um, I wasn't familiar with Olivia Dope either or the podcast, but um, I got familiar very quickly, you guys. I wanted to hear exactly what she had to say. Um, because, you know, if you rely on social media, people have their opinions. Whenever something like this comes out, people always have either something positive or negative to say. And I was just like, let me just listen to what the lady said. Um, she didn't really have to do much because everything that she said, she was able to back up because actually the things that she's accusing Joe Budden of actually happened on a podcast that was recorded. Okay, so it's a little different when it's just hearsay as opposed to everybody really saw what she was talking about. So evidently Olivia Dope was on a, they were on a segment, I mean on a show and um, Joe Budden came in. Okay, now I guess as the, as the person that owns the network and is trying to put this out, you know, they expected him to come on there and be supportive and, you know, lend his Joe Budden-ness. But, you know, what she didn't expect was for him to be coming on to her. He did it so much that I was just like, how did he not think that? I mean, how did he not know that this was inappropriate? At the very beginning, so when she comes out and gives her accusation, she actually gives you timestamps within the, the segments of that show, of that particular podcast, of what he said and how those things made her, her um, uncomfortable. And then there's even a video that actually shows where she says, and then they flip to the segment in the video so that you can actually see what was going on. But yeah, he... He, he he first says that he felt like they needed to speak more. He says that he speaks to Bridget Kelly and Mandy B often, but he doesn't have any relationship at all, you know, professional or even personal with Olivia Dope and that she needed to reach out to him more, okay? She explained why she doesn't really do that. I felt like even in her explanation, she had some sort, some small little inkling of the way that Joe Budden is and that she was trying to keep her distance, but he goes on in that video, goes on to say that he's wanted to fuck her for a long time. I mean, this is like what he says. He mentions that she's like one of the favorites, um, you know, the audience that watches the, or listens to the podcast, that she was one of the favorites, that she um, 
I guess you could say maybe looked better. At least she dressed more sexy than the other women did. You know, the other women have on um, just casual clothes and she's got her shirt, you know, it's kind of unbuttoned. Um, he talked about the fact that she's single, you know, when she said that's why she's single as fuck. And he was just like, oh, she's going to throw sing her singleness in my face. But he, he mentions that how he wants to fuck her a few times in the video. I mean, just comes right out and says it. Um, he's condescending to her. He calls her a bitch when she doesn't do one of the sound effects in the time that he felt like it. I mean, he just was out of control. Um, you know, I know the Joe Button. I know that type of person. Mandy and Bridget, if they have a, have a relationship with Joe, maybe those kind of things would fly. But really, none of that would fly because it's not just you three on talking to this one man. This is an oddity. People are listening. You know, potentially millions of people are listening to this podcast. And even if you didn't offend nobody in that room... You know, you still could offend quite a few people that are listening to the podcast, all right? But that's neither here nor there. As a business person, at some point, you know, you just talk to this woman and you say these things and you seem like you would want to even protect your own self more and know that, okay, even though that's my homegirl or even though, you know, she might have a sense of humor and it might not offend her or something like that, like, I know that I can't be saying this shit to you because it could be, it could come off as harassment. And he clearly was harassing her. I felt so bad for her in the video because she is really just trying to say it. You know what, as a woman... Um, I think many of us have been in situations, many of my female rock stars out there in particular have been in situations where we have had to deal with a man like this, um, maybe to this extreme or maybe even not. But when we've had to deal with a man who has said inappropriate things to us and we maybe did not check them the way that we should have. Okay. And I've even had situations where I was a little upset with myself. Like, why didn't I say like this motherfucker just going to keep on saying something? And like, why didn't I correct that? I've actually had that happen at my job a time or two. It does happen. Okay. So I totally understand why Olivia Dope felt like she needed to go along with the flow. Everybody else is having a good time. Everybody else is laughing. Um, even when she, her own self, knew that none of this was cool, none of this she was okay with. I, I felt so sorry for her when I was watching that video because I was like, hey, nobody needs to be sitting up in they, in they fucking job. First of all, I don't even really know you other than what I hear about you. I mean, I'm your employee and this is how you come and you talk to me on the first, like, this is really what you're doing, you know? And the fact that he laughed the whole time and really felt like, like, he felt like that. That's really how he felt, okay? And um, I just don't know. Joe Budden, he just doesn't seem to have the, the ability to read the room. Like, do you not, and not even that room, but I'm talking about the room of the world right now, the way that the United States, anyway, is is moving, you know, you got to, it's a fine line for sexual harassment and you cannot cross it. You cannot cross it. The line ain't even fine anymore. That shit is wide. And you need to know where that line is and you need to not go over it. And for him to just so blatantly do it, I was just like, Joe, really, what is, really, what is it? What is it? You know, so... She quit in January. She immediately contacted her lawyer. Her lawyer contacted Joe Budden's people, told her that she wasn't coming back, the reasons why. Um, evidently, there were some issue with Bridget and Mandy. I guess they had a... Um, she said that he had created kind of a hostile environment because it was clear that she was kind of maybe his favorite, even if it might have been just because she he was sexually attracted to her. But he had created this environment where the women now were kind of competing for his attention um, and, you know, just kind of, you know how women can be sometimes. It could be some cattiness there if people are not, um, you know, if people are feeling like there's some, like they're competing, you know. 
um, instead of it being this sisterhood, now you've made this environment feel like it's me against the other two girls. And I know for a fact, I would not want to work in a situation like that. Okay. That to come in every day and be fighting with some bitches, you know, that I was cool with. I don't have a problem with none of them, but now you've allowed this man to kind of create this, you know, this feel that, you know, I think that I'm better than you and that's not the case. So, you know, so anyway, now people are saying, well, why is she coming out now? Well, obviously she's coming out now because like I said, the sink is shipping. The ship is sinking, not the sh sink is shipping. <laughs> Where the sink shipping to? Oh, it's going to Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> the ship is sinking. So yeah, I mean, I would use this time too. I mean, she's probably sat with her emotions and sat with herself and probably was disappointed in the fact she maybe she's held herself up to um, a, a different standard and said that she's always going to be the type to speak out and all that. And then she didn't. And sometimes when you don't do something that you normally do, or you know, in your heart and soul that you should have done, that shit can fester. And it, and it can give you, it could give you some, it can give you some issue. So, um, over these last three months or three or four months, you know, I guess she decided, you know, she thought about it. She knew that she had a child, a daughter who, you know, now she's ashamed that, she, that this is out there on the internet forever and ever for people to see. Her child can see that and see that her mom was talked to like that. And so she has decided that, um, she's coming out with it. And like I said, we saw the video. She wasn't lying. It happened. I guess what people are trying to say is, well, you was laughing and you was when you was going along with it, but I mean, you saw why she said she did that. I mean, who wants to be the old damn Debbie Downer who wants to just everybody's having a you know fun time and here come the fun police and killing all of the good times and you know being extra serious and you know sister soldier and all of this like nobody wants to be that either. And really, if you're caught off guard, you don't know how to react to these things. Like, you just do what you do right then. But then when you think about it, it's like you didn't handle that the best way or the way that you would have wanted to have handled it. So, you know, she... She um, is coming out with it now. I believe her. It was obvious right there. Joe Budden did do what he did. Um, he came onto his po podcast... And he did apologize. The, the apology to me felt a little tongue-in-cheek. But Joe Button kind of sounds a little tongue-in-cheek all the time. So it's hard to, for me to tell if he was sincere or not. I saw that um, uh, Sky Santana said that even later on in that podcast, he still started to mock Olivia again. And so it kind of made it seem like he was not all that sincere in his apology. Um, but his apology, he did say that, you know, it's, he's responsible for making sure that it's a safe place, that he's got to make some changes and bring some women in and bring people that are more, sensual, you know, sensitive in. And, you know, goes back to the fact that, you know, therapy's probably working on himself and all this. The thing is about therapy is, you guys, I'm all for therapy. People need to go to therapy. This is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, I'm all for therapy, but I also feel like, you know, if you're just going to continue to do the same shit over and over and over and over again, then what is the therapy helping? Like, what is it doing where you just keep on making the same fucking moves and then we don't say, oh yeah, I'm going to my therapist. I'm working on me. Okay. The work ain't working. So, you know, we can't keep saying that we working on ourselves, doing the work and all of that. When you really probably aren't, you wasting your time and a therapist's time. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I didn't talk about that, honey. When you talk about pontification on today, <laughs> I ain't been here. I didn't do one last week. So y'all gonna get all of this, all of this rocky pontification on today. You guys let me know what you think about that. I mean, I don't not like Joe Button. I know his type and I usually can deal with those type of men. There's many women who don't deal with that type of men well, okay? And they shouldn't have to, all right? So don't be an overwhelming asshole, okay? Don't be this creep. Don't be saying how you want to fuck people. And all. Don't be all that. Just don't be all that. <sighs> but yeah, as a woman, ladies, 
rock star girls out there, you got I know you guys have had some stories. Y'all going to leave those down in the podcast. Too, I mean, in the podcast, <laughs> in the comments too. I got to move on to the to the next story. Y'all let me know what you think about all that. But yeah, it look like it's going down for Joe Button. Like I said, not in a good way. We'll see what happens. Next story, the versus battle between Escape and SWV. I didn't get to talk about this last week either, either. So you getting this today too. I did enjoy the versus battle. I didn't think that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did um, because I'm not an Escape fan. I mean, I have respect for Escape and I like the, some of their songs, you know, the songs that, that were their hits, but I don't know their B-sides, okay? I don't know their songs that weren't like the big, big hits, I just don't. They, they they just never was for me. Okay, um, but I've I've grooved to plenty of Escape songs, and Escape was definitely a part of my soundtrack in my twenties. So I mean, you know, I can I can feel it. I can give respect where respect is due. But I'm always gonna be SWV. Is that I mean that's just what it is. Their music is just larger to me than Escape's music is. All right, it's just it was bigger. It was more known. It was way crossed i mean crossed over way more than um escape song is are but you know versus we keep on saying that it's not a competition that it really is more so a celebration and, and it did feel like a celebration but it also did feel like a competition when you think about um escape and candy especially who has always been super competitive then um yeah i mean it was a competition um and let me tell you Escape came ready to fight. They, honey, when I tell you them bitches was, had made sure that they was put to fucking gather. Now, if we was going to do a, a, a battle on who looked the best, clearly Escape, hands down. Okay, all the designer, I mean, they was designer down. Everybody's hair was right. Makeup was right. Um, uh, uh, even though what's her name had that damn big ponytail on the side, that's not really for me, but you know, everybody waist snatched, honey, that candy stood up so much. She was like, you gonna see this waist that she didn't worked her ass off to get back down to. Okay. I'm sure it was corseted or whatever, but yeah, they looked great. I loved all of the black. Um, I thought tiny looked very pretty. I love the looks because you guys know Rocky loves the fashions. Rocky is always going to love the fashions. When SWV came out, I knew that they weren't going to be fashionable because they ain't never been fashionable. Honey, they going to throw on a, a sweatshirt and some cut off jeans, or, you know, just some, <laughs> some skinny jeans and some tennis shoes and like, they've never been that for me. So, we I'll give that to Escape, okay? Um, but this is a singing competition, if we're going to say we was competing. And um, I even thought Escape sounded really good, okay? I love the fact that, honey, they was ready. They got their asses up. They sang from the very beginning, okay? Started the shit off with, with they, um, with, um with the gospel song well, child what the why i can't think of it is eternal clark sister song y'all why i can't think of the shit right now why I keep on saying shit i'm sorry god please forgive me um oh it's like right uh, no of course not it's stuck right in my is my living in vain child i'm telling you don't get old y'all anyway so they started off um, and SWV, they sat over on the other side. If I was going to be truthful about SWV, Coco's energy is always a little off whenever I see them do something live. Um, it's always just a little bit, it takes her a moment to get into things. Okay, so I I, I I could see that that was what was happening. The, um, they had um, they had Taj be the more vocal one, who usually is the vocal one. She and Lily both they they do speak more than Coco. Coco is strictly there for the for the pipes, 
for the singing. So so when they when we would see their side of the couches, when they would cut, come time for them to do their um, little thing, it was very lackluster and just sort of like, and I was like, oh yeah, this is not, this is not giving what it's supposed to give, y'all. Um, and I was starting to feel like the first half that I wasn't going to tune in for the second half because between Escape's fucking songs that I didn't barely know, okay, other than the, the, the real well-known ones, and then SWV over here not giving it to me like I really need them to, I was just like, oh, fuck this. But I was like, no, let me, right before they went on the break, um, Coco got up and sang, if only you knew, and um, I was, I was, I was interested again. <laughs> just like girl now you know so i was like okay finally coco is starting to loosen up i could feel like okay we're gonna get on this break and everybody gonna go pee and you know get them a little drinky drink and you know get a couple of laughs in the back and they're gonna come out and they're gonna be more comfortable and i don't know if that's what they did but when they came back is it was like that's what what had had, had happened and honey, SWV came back in that second half with a fucking vengeance. Now they wasn't sitting their ass down no more. They was up, they was performing. And they reminded us, I didn't need reminding though, but they reminded many why people were saying that SWV had, a, you guys, SWV had way larger hits than Escape did. Okay, way larger hits. So when, when when they was playing all of them different um, songs, you're the one for me. And when they sang, I'm so into you. And when they sang right here, oh, when they sang right here, did y'all had to have just forget it. Escape just needed to forget it, okay? Um, and, and then Week, when they close it out with Week, even though they didn't close it out with we, because then um, can't they was like it's not over because they knew that they had the last song. That that was the reason why when they came back from break they made sure that um, SWV went first because they knew that that meant that they would be the ones to close out the show and they would be able to do Understanding, which is I guess from what you guys tell me is their largest hit. I honestly have never liked understanding that much it sounds like a nursery rhyme to me it seems very elementary the song but i mean i like understanding but it's not to me that's not their best song if we talking about their their the biggest hits i've always felt like do you want to like i will i want to make love to you or say you do whatever i've always that's my favorite escape song it's just way more complex than understanding it's not as simple as understanding is to me but whatever they closed it out with that but honey you couldn't top weak swv is making you weak in the knees bitch what come on now don't do it don't do it at the end of the day it was just you know, these women coming together. I mean, I would definitely love to go to their, I mean, if they did a tour together, I would love to go to their tour. I bet you it would be very entertaining um, because Escape do have some hood hits and, um, you know, they have some features. We had Jermaine Dupri come out there. We had the Brad come out there. I mean, and if we was really, I mean, SWV would have to do a lot to get their people, a lot of those features there. They had a lot of features back in the day and like big, big names. But I mean, if we was going to get all their features on there, to, child, please, it would be a fucking party. It would be a party. You guys hear me? A party. But I enjoyed it. I, I loved it. Um, and, um, no disrespect to Escape. I do enjoy Escape. I like Escape. I just love SWV. And that's just what it was for me. Now, y'all tell me what y'all think. I know many of the younger people love Escape more, especially now. You know, Escape has made sure that they've kept themselves relevant. They still are out there. They are still touring and doing things and Candy is on Real Housewives and Tiny has, you know, with the exception of shit that's been happening recently, you know, she has her own thing as well. And um, Latasha had been on a reality show. So everybody's been still. So they have newer, probably newer generation fans and SWV, but still, you guys, that SWV came hard, came hard. I was in the bathtub when they sang Week. I almost splashed that fucking water out that tub. I was, woo! better do it <laughs> anyway i done talked about them long enough too let's move on to the next sto uh story y'all tell me what you thought about the versus battle mm -hmm. 